Hey y'all, good morning. It's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. Um, I have tried to go live twice today and it not work. So let me check on the setting right quick. And while I'm doing... Hey y'all. <laughs> this has been the craziest morning. I started the video and my fax number rang. I started the video and my brother called. It's been nuts. But anyway, good morning. We're going to be in our uh, Jesus, Our Perfect Hope with Charles Stanley. We may go to the other one if uh, we review this one fast enough. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing my makeup for y'all because I have a favorite makeup now again. Uh, cheapest dirt makeup, but I love it. So I'll probably, because I don't have my makeup on and I need to put some makeup on today. So I may go live and um, show y'all my makeup, and I can't decide whether or not I want to do it on Color Valley Cooks or not. Um, I did a uh, home video yesterday on Color Valley Cooks uh, about the vacuum cleaner, the toaster. I guess y'all seen that. Uh, but anyway, I'll think about it. Um, this today is Galatians 2.20 in our Charles Stanley, Jesus, Our Perfect Hope book. And... Um, so we're going to be reading that, and I have flipped over to it already. So uh, we're going to read the verse. Um, it says, I am crucified. Let's see. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's a lot to say, isn't it? Um, yesterday, during that live video, I told people, I was on YouTube, and I told people that I was a Christian, and that we had this Bible study, and they were welcome to tune in if they would like. And I did have one person say they were not a Christian. Um, and it was funny because uh, she said, I'm not a Christian. But I do clean my vacuum th cleaner and do the things, the the things that I, let's see, what, how does she put it? She put, I do clean my vacuum cleaner and do what's right in parentheses. And uh, I thought that was kind of funny that, not funny, it's sad that she isn't a Christian because I want her to go to heaven. But the first thing she did in her mind was say that she was doing something that was right. And a lot of people think that if they do things that are right and they're primarily good, then they would get into heaven. Um, and that's not what it says in the word of the Lord. So it's, um, we ought to pray for her. I'm not going to tell y'all her name because I don't really know it, but think about her in your prayers and maybe eventually she'll tune in and she'll become a Christian. Um, and that's why everything we do as Christians matter. Um, it doesn't mean we're perfect. And I hope people know that we're not perfect. And even, even my sisters and brothers in Christ know that sometimes I'm going to fail and I'm going to say something I shouldn't. Or I'm going to have a bad attitude when I shouldn't. And I hope and pray that all of you remember that we are people and we will make mistakes. And we're going to love each other anyway. But I'm going to read this verse one more time. And it says, um, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. For those of you who are new Christians, that is kind of a deep uh, verse. He says he's crucified with Christ. This is Paul talking to the church of Galatia. Galatia. Um, and the reason he says he's crucified with Christ is because when we become saved, we are supposed to um, put aside our fleshly and uh, worldly way of living and crucify those sinful ways in our flesh each and every day. And it's that's why he says that he's crucified with Christ. That's what that means. Um, and he says, nevertheless, I live, which we all know that even if we're saved and we crucify our flesh, we still live here on the earth, like he says. But he says, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. 
Now, if we choose to surrender and lay that aside, then we can let Christ live through us. Okay. And that's what this means. Um, he says, and the life which I now live in the flesh, which is our worldly life, he lives it in the flesh. He lives by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So he's letting you know that um, the life that he lives now here on the earth, he lives uh, through Christ living in him. He does it by the faith that God gives him. And that's because God loved us and gave his only begotten son that whosoever uh, believeth should not perish but have everlasting life. So that's kind of what this verse is saying, that he doesn't live in the flesh, this worldly life anymore. He lives through Christ. He does it because he knows that Christ loved him and he gave his life for him. Um, so that's a big, uh, that's a lot to say in one verse, Galatians 2.20. That is a good life verse, actually. If you don't have one, that might be one you want to memorize and uh, keep, you know, pinned up somewhere because it is a beautiful verse. Now we're going to read what Charles Stanley had to say about this verse. He says, what keeps you from serving God? Question mark. It is fit. Okay, what keeps you from serving God? Is it fear of being misunderstood or even rejected? Are you afraid of what people may think about you? Um, I'll bring that up because a lot of people don't want to teach anybody or teach Sunday school or anything like that because they think they're not qualified. Or they're afraid. Um, but it says, are you afraid of what people might think about you? Realize that your Savior, Jesus, was often unfairly attacked by enemies. But through it all, no one ever saw Jesus worrying about public opinions or the consequences in this life. Rather, Jesus was focused on the eternal mission. His desire was for people to know him as a savior so that they could be eternally reconciled with God. Um, I'm going to throw this in there. What he's saying is Jesus desired um, for people to know him as their savior, which means we are saved through him so that we could be eternally reconciled with God. When Jesus died on the cross, um, he made a way for us to be reconciled with God. Uh, he changed what in the past had been irreversible for Adam sinning in the garden and us being born into sin. We are still born into sin, but he made a way for us to be reconciled with God when he done that. And that's what Charles Stanley is saying here. It says, and because of it, he bears the name above all names. And this is found in Philippians 2 verse 9. Now, Philippians is right there next to Galatians. So I thought we would read it. Um, let's see. It's just uh, Philippians 2 verse 9 says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. And he's talking about Christ here. So, um, uh, it says, the same has been true of all Christ's disciples. Yes, many were not misunderstood and rejected, but beaten, imprisoned, and even executed for their faith. Nothing stood in the way of their determination to do God's will. Why were they willing to make such, such sacrifices? Because they valued Christ above every other thing. You must too. As missionary Jim Elliot so famously said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain and that which he cannot lose. Never let the opinions of others become the focus in your life or of your life. And Jesus always holds the key to your greatest and most lasting rewards. So remember that. 
It says, Jesus, help me to obey you faithfully and with courage. Amen. It says, my hope is in Jesus because the life he gives is eternal. Um, that's a pretty good study this morning, I think, without picking up the other book. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Jesus is worth us putting aside our fleshly ways and life um, so that we can let him live through us like he would like to. Um, let his light shine in the world, the dark world. And um, I hope that we all think about that today. Remember that, I believe it was, um, if you wanted to, to write down that verse again, it's Galatians 2.20, if you want to go read it. Now, um, we're going to say our prayers, and then I'm going to decide what to do We about um, how I'm going to post this that I want to post. Um, I could not believe it, y'all. Chris's mother called me last night. She said, we need to talk about our meal. And I was like, okay. And I had no idea. I just, I just, it's just snuck up on me that Christmas is just a few days away. And so we'll be getting together with them this weekend. And I'm, you know, I've got cooking to do and things to do. And me and Chris have been working on a couple of projects. And so we've been real deep involved in those. And we've got, I think I'm going to take Friday off and cook some live on, um, Clear Valley Cooks for y'all, because Saturday and Sunday we'll be with the family. Um, I hope you guys are getting ready to be with your families this Christmas. Um, and it's just wild to me that it snuck up on me so fast. My family actually celebrates Christmas a week after Christmas. So we'll probably do a celebration here at my house, because I've gotten quite a few things from you guys from my uh, wish list. And I would love to be able to have Mama over here for Christmas and her get to see some things. So we're going to actually have it here. We don't normally do that. We have not had Christmas at my house in years. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but we won't do that till the following weekend, which is around the 29th, which is closer to New Year's um, Eve, actually. So let's say our prayers this morning. It's so good to see everybody this morning and have you on here. Um... And then I'll, I guess I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, um, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for each and everything you do for us. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to shed his blood for the ultimate sacrifice so that we could live, be reconciled to you, and live an abundant life here in this world through him. Um, be with us as we go throughout our day. Help us be good um, witnesses. Help us encourage others and not discourage others. Help us have the right attitude and the sweet words that we need to encourage others, all others around us, our family, our friends, everyone. Um, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all, um, I was going to tell y'all something. Then I was praying and I forgot which is a good thing because I was thinking about what I was praying and you shouldn't be thinking about what you're praying when you're praying, right? It shouldn't just be something you're doing. Um, but I lost my train of thought. So I guess it doesn't matter that much, does it? <laughs> anyway, I love all y'all so much. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. Um, and I will see you soon. Love ya.